All the time I get messaged on YouTube by young people trying to figure out how to calculate the gear ratio for their homemade off-road machine, like a go-kart, a scooter, a motorized bicycle, you know, an off-road machine that has a gas-powered engine. So I'll show you the math that I figured out when I was 14 all by myself to start making my motorized vehicles. And I always got the ratios correct so the, to match about the horsepower the engine had. So first thing is, get rid of your kitty stars as they're blocking the calculations. Next is determine what size wheels you're going to use depending on what kind of machine you're making and of course what kind of motor you're going to use. Could be even a weed eater or chainsaw. Well I've done a couple sets of calculations. One I did for a weed eater motor and one I did imagining that motor was an 8 horsepower go-kart motor even though it says 5.5. So to do this, you only need a pen and paper, a measuring tape, and a calculator. The first thing you have to do is just have enough brains to try to calculate about how much horsepower you think it's going to take to move your machine with your weight on it, what top speed you can get out of that horsepower for that weight of machine, whether it has two wheels, four wheels, and how much you weigh and how much the machine weighs. And for me, this isn't hard to guess, but for another person, it might be pretty tough. So just listen to what I have to say, and you may be able to guess how much top speed you can get out of so much horsepower. Now, if you had a really strong weed eater, stronger than most, and it had one horsepower, well, one horsepower on a low-friction device like a bicycle with two wheels is capable of carrying an average-sized adult around a top speed of up to about 25 miles per hour. If you had a go-kart with an ordinary like lawnmower type engine like this and the go-kart weighed say about 200 pounds and you weighed about 150 pounds so your total weight was 350 pounds and you have the friction and resistance of four wheels and of course a go-kart has more air resistance than a bicycle with a person on it. Well about eight horsepower will move your go-kart if you calculate everything out right about 50 miles per hour. That's all the power it's got. <laughs> That's all it can do. Since most of the people watching me are Americans, I'm going to give this information to you in miles per hour, you know, the old-fashioned not metric system. So here's some things you'd have to think about if you wanted to make a go-kart and figure out the gear ratios. Well, first information you got to know is a mile is 5,280 feet. The average RPM of a motor like that maxing out at redline is about 5,000 RPM. Well, the wheel I chose to make an imaginary go-kart with, I borrowed from my friend John that came off my go-kart. Well, I took my measuring tape and I measured all the way around that wheel and the wheel turned out to be about four feet around, 48 inches, like so. I'm imagining that motor is eight horsepower like I said, I'm imagining the total weight of the moving vehicle is 350 pounds. And I've come up with a gear ratio, just for example, of 3.79 to 1 if I wanted that go-kart to go 60 miles per hour. But I really don't think that engine would have enough power to make it go 60 miles an hour, but I know it would have enough power to go 50 miles an hour. So I'll show you how I came up with these calculations and that final answer. Look at my kitty enjoying that nip on the floor that I gave her. <laughs> my famous cat nip from David's farm. But anyways, so if that motor were 8 horsepower and that 350 pound go-kart with somebody in it had a wheel that size, well it could probably do 50 miles per hour. Now if I put that clutch on it, well I've already measured the sprocket on that clutch and its total diameter is 1.75 inches. So the engine would have to spin 3.79 times to make that wheel turn one rotation to get that top speed if this engine could move it at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles per hour. Since that clutch is 1.75 inches in diameter that means to get this ratio 3.79 to 1 the sprocket on the axle to drive that wheel would have to be 6.63 inches or 60 miles per hour. Here's how I figured that out. So what I did was, since that wheel was four feet around diameter, 
I divided 4 feet into 5,280 feet and that came out to a number of 1,320. So that means that wheel would rotate in one mile. If you just rolled it on the road, it would rotate 1,320 times. Next thing to remember is 60 miles per hour equals one mile per minute that you're driving. If this imaginary go-kart could do 60 miles per hour, we would have it redlining at 5,000 RPMs and at the same time at 60 miles per hour the wheels would be rotating at 1320 revolutions per minute so if you divide 1320 into 5000 you will get an answer of 3.79 that means 1320 fits into there 3.79 times so that's how I got that ratio 3.79 to 1 so this is how I calculated the new calculation so that the engine would still redline at 5,000 RPM, but when the go-kart is at 50 miles per hour. So what I did, I wrote down 50 miles per hour, divided it by 60, and that gave me a number of 0.833. So I took 0.833 and subtracted that from 1, a whole number, I ended up with about 17, well, or 17% difference to make 50 miles per hour. Now since I already know that the diameter of this is 1.75 inches, I multiplied that number times that number and that gave me this number 6.63 inches which would be the size of the axle sprocket if the go-kart could do 100 miles, 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles per hour. But like I said, since the go-kart will likely only do 50 miles per hour, we want to find out the new sprocket size that would be bigger to cause the engine to still redline at 5,000 RPM, but do that at 50 miles per hour. So 6.63 inches. Uh, I want it to spin. I want that sprocket to be 17% bigger. So I multiplied 6.63 times 1.17 and that came out to 7.757 for a new ratio of 4.43 to 1. That'll make that go-kart with that sprocket and that tire redline at 5,000 RPM at 50 miles per hour which is just about right if that were 8 horsepower. Let's imagine the diameter of your wheel didn't work out so simply at 4 feet. What if it was 3 feet 8 inches? Well, calculators don't work in fractions, so you have to use decimal places to use numbers on calculators to calculate things. So if that said 3 feet 8 inches, well that's not 3.8 feet. Inches, there is 12 inches in a foot, and 8 inches is actually 0.666 of a foot. <laughs> so if that wheel were 3 feet 8 inches around, that would equal on your calculator when you're doing the calculations 3.666 feet.